Miss McMahon is gone and already we have the best SmackDown we've ever had in a long time, man. This felt like a go-home show. Almost every aspect of it I enjoyed. As you know, in the past I would do these show reviews, Raw, SmackDown, even the PLEs. I think I'm going to bring them back now because it was enjoyable. And since I've done so many videos about pro wrestling games, why not talk about the actual shows as well? So yeah, man, let's go do it real quick. Right there, here it is. This person came out. I still don't remember his name and perhaps I will never, ever remember. But he called out Randy Orton and I thought this was a great segment because celebrities they can backfire logan paul obviously is a great example but most of the time he can be really awkward like oh what are you saying what are you doing but i think this was really good the guy spoke really really nicely he kept it really short anyways and then randy orton came out and he addressed the crowd he forgot that oh yeah he doesn't have the finally randy has came back or like what do you guys want to talk about but he said like hello basically said hello to the city which i thought was interesting and then yeah, it was really nice he put the music artist over real quickly saying this is a good friend man he put me in his music video awesome you know congratulations to him i like that and then of course we had aj size and la Knight come out to introduce or make us remember again that yeah tomorrow Royal rumble man we have this battle for me match which is going to be extremely fun by the way uh i will have my predictions on this i highly suggest you check out a channel called off the top you'll see the link down in the description it is really good me and a whole bunch of other wrestling game youtubers we will give you our predictions probably sometime tomorrow hopefully <laughs> uh, that being said let's continue i have to say aj what he said was okay i like his gimmick but on the mic he's always been satisfactory but nothing more than that and that didn't change today i really like randy orton too but la night man he felt on fire because i used to do these reviews again back in the day just a couple of months ago not that long ago and la night would always speak too fast and then he would mess up some of the words like jumble some of the words as i did in the very beginning of this video this time it didn't happen he spoke fast what he said was awesome his uh, cadence everything about this was awesome yeah like again the way he delivered it and the material as well the crowd tonight in miami i gotta give them kudos too because crowd makes or breaks a wrestling show and this crowd was with everything they were here to have fun and not make the show about themselves it was incredible and some of the things that i hated or really didn't like turned out to be really good in the show and it almost felt like like they remembered oh this is the royal rumble we are wwe we're supposed to be entertaining we can do these things that we have for some reason stopped doing i'll get to it in a second now with these screenshots at wwe.com they usually don't show, show the backstage segments so hopefully i can remember what i'm about to talk about but let's continue man this was great elena came in said what he needed to say he got out of there and then aj kicked uh, randy whatever the only thing i don't like about this segment is that AJ was talking about LA Knight and at the very second somebody pressed the button for LA Knight's music like that's unrealistic right as a wrestling fan I want to still even after all these years I want WWE to be or any other wrestling promotion to be so good that for a second I forget that this shit is scripted if you can do that to me Gunter does that to me sometimes Randy Orton when he's good he does that to me sometimes I feel like a kid again I feel like I'm watching an actual fight if you can do that that is the greatest amount of quality stars or whatever bar you put yourself like you, you break that bar once you're able to do that and stuff like this breaks that immersion for me so like was someone waiting for la night he told them beforehand whenever he says my name just press the button you know it's unrealistic now overall i have no problem with this segment really it was amazing but these small details when you take like take attention or pay attention to these and take care of these it makes a huge difference at the end of the day, it can take something from being good, which this segment was good, to being absolutely great or all-timer. And But anyways, amazing opening to SmackDown. I thought it was very fast-paced. Cool. We get to a match, Santos Escobar. <laughs> I like it. I like the fact that they made a meme out of Carlito saying, I want to face Santos Escobar. <laughs> I think that's pretty cool. Zelina Vega, man, I got to say, every single week, Every single week, she makes me think about things. Just like, uh, what's her face? Maxine Dupree. Oh my goodness. Anyway, <clears throat> anyways. Uh, match itself, I gotta be honest with you guys. I never really told you about my feelings when it comes to Carlito. He's not the greatest. I'm gonna be honest. In the past, they would call him lazy. There were rumors going around. And I gotta be honest, kind of felt that way. Ever since he came out for a rescue segment, I remembered this. Someone was getting beat up and Carlito was gonna go there to rescue somebody. His music hits. Well, his music is very bad. His whole presentation ever since coming back i think is really missing the mark and he would just walk to the ring your friend is being killed in front of you why are you walking to the ring you're not even eating the apple you're not even cool you know if you are cool i would maybe forgive you but you're not even cool and you know what i do to the people who 
don't wanna be yeah yeah but i mean so <laughs> anyways this was in a long while maybe the show started good so i enjoyed this like i said i haven't enjoyed anything karate was done but this was nice the match itself was whatever but at the end we got electro lopez which is a name i've seen a couple times just maybe two times on nxt it's cool it's cool this storyline is getting deeper and deeper i also really love humberto carrillo and what's his name angel garza being with santos escobar i think they have a lot of potential with electro lopez being there as well i think their potential is shot through the roof the only thing i'm really eerie about and um, like i don't like is dude, here's another faction man we got lwo we got the santos escobar faction now you got the judgment day it's faction after faction after faction after faction after faction like i don't want this to be like AEW where every single person comes out with 20 other people with the entire crowd no it should as much as possible people should be by themselves i'm not saying don't do any factions but limit that man all right let's spice things up switch up the wheel a little bit there you go i mean yeah the way they dress i thought was also nice you know simple black and white great some chains great that's all you need you're a heel you don't need to go too crazy um let's continue to the next ooh match yeah so i told you earlier that in the smackdown i liked some of the stuff that i'm presupposed to not like and one of those things that i don't like usually are women's matches because they usually don't have a story or if they do it's very lackluster it doesn't make sense it's obvious that wwe themselves don't care about it or the wrestlers are simply boring and i really like oscar i like Kyrie sane and i'm not a big fan of katana chance and uh, Kaden carter but i don't hate them either so i was like always in a spot where hey if they do something good why not I, I'm, I'm okay to watch let's see and today i think they did something good and as a matter of fact let me think real quick yep uh confirmed <laughs> this match was the best match on smackdown and this was one of the best women's matches i've seen in a long while again maybe it's just that smackdown in general this week was great it was an awesome uh, go home show but honestly after the charlotte rhea ripley match I didn't care about any other women's match until today. This was great. This was great. Uh, before this, Bailey had a backstage promo. That was amazing. Bailey is literally the man. I know we call Becky Lynch the man, but I think Bailey is everything that Becky Lynch is not. She's the best promo in the WWE when it comes to the women. And she's my favorite women's wrestler, anyways. She's great in the ring. She has a great attire. She has one of the best themes in the WWE as well. It's so cool listening to it and rocking out. I gotta say, man, that promo hyped me up. That promo gave me a reason, right? To care about this match that was super important that's what you want to do in wrestling as well besides you know making it seem real you want a reason you want maybe even more than making it real you want a reason for people to care and bailey at least provided that to me the way he or she set everything up and put everything into perspective was awesome and i definitely wanted to see even though they're the heels that's a bit of a problem even though these girls are the heels i wanted to see the kabuki warriors take uh take the victory and yeah kaden carton uh, doing a wild entrance uh, her dance move was wild to me because i know where it's associated uh, associated to and let me tell you it is not pg that dance move is not pg man uh, it's crazy in the first place i no disrespect to these ladies but they've become champions but i mean that shows how bad the tag team division the women's tag team division especially in the wwe was the thing is the man's tag team division is not better either and it's never been uh, in my 20 not 20 years but over 10 years of watching the wwe the tag team division always was missing and even when it was a little more prominent than it was usually uh it's it was still not there it was still subpar but anyways i like right now the fact that we have new champions here the match itself was again awesome awesome moves everything hit the right spot i thought oscar especially in the last few years really slowed down and kind of had the aj styles effect where i know she's an awesome wrestler but for some reason she's just not having one good match man one good match her matches were not bad not by any means but it was just boring right just a nothing burger of matches this match was actually good again timing the way they hit the moves there wasn't any botches that i could have remember they went in there they wrestled like hell they got the crowd behind them and they they did a good finish man and the finish made sense both tag teams ended up looking good oscar wrestled one of her best matches in a long while good to see Kyrie saying on the to at the top of our game too and this kind of made me like the other tag team too with uh kaden carter and katana chance 
These girls seriously lack character though. That's like they need a better gimmick, something more memorable. Because to me, they're Pete Dunn right now. Pete Dunn is an awesome wrestler in the ring while her, his like finger stuff is not the greatest, to be honest with you. Pause. But I mean, that's the thing. That's the thing. Pete Dunn also lacks character. I thought Butch for that reason was better. So when he returned to Pete Dunn last week, I was kind of sad because, man, Butch is ridiculous. I get that. I completely understand. But at least it was something. Like he would go crazy. He would do something memorable. He had a character. Pete Dunn is just straight face. It doesn't do anything. And it just messes with people's fingers. I don't know. But anyways, this match was awesome, man. This match was awesome. More stuff like this. More matches that matter in the women's division. More, yeah, again, give importance to the women's title. As a matter of fact, I'm of the belief that there should really be only one women's title. So it takes either SmackDown or Raw women's title out. And then have banger matches like back in the day, remember NXT TakeOvers, Brooklyn's, but Bailey and Sasha Banks. Get the women's division to that level where every single women's match is now an actual main event quality awesome match. And then you can think about separating the titles. Because even with the men's titles, you'll look at it. Well, actually, I shouldn't say even with the man, men's titles because, you know, that's a bad way to put it. But with the men's titles also, like Seth Rollins, you see the criticism against him, right? It's it's not perfect either. Anyways, um, this this was good, man. Um, as, again, I, I loved Asuka here. I hope they don't make her dance because it just seems so stereotypical. It seems uh, straight up racist to me. I'm, I'm going to be honest. It seems racist to me the way they have, have her dancing. like, And then she sp screams in Japanese. It's like, whoa. It's like, this is, you got tons of writers. This is the best stuff you can come up with. Of course, she's Japan. No, she's the entirety of Japan. Of course, she's Japanese. So she should speak Japanese every now and then. But don't make her literally into a stereotype screaming stuff in Japanese. It just doesn't work, man. I know you're trying to connect, you know, find some way of connection with the fans, but there are better ways of doing this. And you also actually did this in back in like 2015 or whenever when Asuka was in NXT. So take more of that. Asuka in NXT instead of Asuka screaming random stuff in Japanese and dancing and cringing me the hell out, bro. Anyways, anyways, yeah, they deserve that hug right there. And I love here just a little detail. The ref was like, hey, hey, uh, Kyrie, you won the match. She was just tapping Kyrie on the shoulder for like, or the ref was t tapping Kyrie on the shoulder was like five minutes. Hey, you won the match. Take your goddamn title. <laughs> but anyways, also Bailey uh, took care of Kyrie saying again, because the title was looking really weird. I think it was stuck to her hair. Bailey fixed that, man. That's why Bailey is the absolute goat it's interesting though i really wonder what they're gonna do with dakota kai um when she's done with her injury all right well we gotta keep switching it up okay let's switch it up too much there we go <laughs> yeah this is good the pyro was out of nowhere this was nice this was a pleasant surprise i gotta say and then we had the bobby lashley and the new testament segment and this is the biggest shocker right here again i talked about things that i don't like i kind of liked it in the smackdown and this was the biggest example of this. This was the absolute biggest example of this. I actually enjoyed this segment because I thought these guys were underwhelming, right? Because Bobby Lashley is great, but the Street Profits are the Street Profits and they literally didn't change anything. They turned heel, but they did all the same moves as they did when they were baby faces. So what is the freaking point? They dressed the same as well. And then the crowd cheered them so much that they had to stay baby face. Now... There's baby, they're pretty much baby face, 100%, but they're also a bit more serious. So they are a little different than their street profit times where like they were 200% goofy. Now I, I would say they're 75% um, goofy, which is a big improvement. I think these guys should get serious. I think a lot of people in WWE should get a little bit more serious in my humble opinion, but this was nice. This was nice. Uh, Bobby Lashley is not the greatest on the mic, but he is obviously a ton more comfortable now on there and speaking to the crowd like not speaking with the craft as a matter of fact and he makes those chants as well randy orton did it in the beginning of the uh, night as well when he heard that like somebody chant randy orton he's like what's that i thought that was so awesome you know that's how you know a wrestler is really good at on the microphone because he's not just speaking what he needs to say he's not saying that he's speaking with the crowd he's getting them into the segment and that's it when you can do that you got something going man you got something special going their new song was nice it was a mix up of old carrying cross team and just a new melody over it i thought that was pretty sweet uh aop right now they're just nameless uh brutes to be honest with you and i was also really interested in seeing how this formation was going to work because we got so many people here man we got the entire roster here you know five people two of them are managers kind of confusing but 
I didn't dislike it. I didn't dislike it. The only thing I can say is like, if Paul Paul Ellering wasn't here, segment wouldn't have changed much. But Paul being there, especially for old timers, I think he kind of adds a bit of a legitimacy to this match or, or to this uh, faction. Let me say, I loved how Scarlett got into Bobby's face and Bobby calls that out. Like it, everything made sense in this segment, man. And then yeah, just carrying tricks, Bobby. Gets the better of him. When EOP hit the rink and actually like did the short arm clothesline and the other guy did the power bomb. I thought that looked really strong. I thought the crowd also like took it seriously because it did look really like stiff and, and good. You know, it accomplished what it needed to accomplish. And yeah, he did the CM Punk pose, but crowd was uh, positive on this. And as a matter of fact, the most important part of this uh, segment, as I was talking about how Rain Orton was speaking with the crowd, Karrion Cross actually spoke with the crowd. He was uh, speaking with a good cadence. He wasn't stopping like, I came here, what, to do this? No, he didn't allow those watts to come in there too much. He was saying what he needed to say, you know, in a good way to disallow those watt chants. And the crowd still watted him because, I mean, come on, Karrion Cross, they've given him so many chances. He messed up so many times or he got messed up by the WWE so many times. Both of these things happened so much that, you know, people are now looking at Karrion Cross and saying, like, okay, this guy is never going to be something... But I think after today, that might change. If he continues to show us segments like this, everything might change for Kyrian Cross. And with a belt like that he has, with a faction behind his back, this guy can become a world champion. <laughs> but this was just one week. We're going to have to wait and see. The, the thing that I liked the most about this segment was that, yeah, like he was trying his best with his cadence and he was good, cutting a good promo and trying to stop the crowd from chanting what. And they didn't chant what. And then, you know, he... So basically told the crowd to shut the hell up. And then instead of boo uh, chanting what at Karrion Cross, the crowd actually very heavily started booing him. And that was the exact reaction you needed to get as a heel. That was amazing. This was great work by Karrion Cross. I, I loved it. I loved it. I am like I crapped on, <laughs> let me tell you, to be honest with you, crapped on Karrion Cross so many times because I never even really was captivated by him on NXT. I am not, really. This was the best segment that he has ever done, ever since coming to the WWE. I, I really think so. I honestly think so. Uh, when this group first debuted, I said, ah, this still doesn't make me excited for Karrion Cross at all, but it's definitely way better than what he was doing. And uh, you know what? I'll I'll take a look at it. I'll take a look at what he's doing. And uh, today I did do that, and uh, I was really, really impressed. And I love it. Hopefully they are able to continue this. I think this is, might be a very fun rivalry with an interesting dynamic. Um, but obviously Karen Cross now finally has to win something. Um, after that, I don't know what they're going to do with the Bobby Lashley. Maybe then they will turn heel and have that heel run. But yeah, I thought this was good, man. R really shocking. But every single person in this segment, from Paul Ellering to Karen Cross to Scarlett, was used perfectly, including the, you know, um, street profits this was actually a highlight for me because of how shocking it was how uh, shockingly good it was and then we had the rematch the run back of carmelo hayes and austin Thierry. but before we get to this let me talk about the backstage segments a little bit the roulette do you they had the roulette with the balls not the roulette but you get what i mean um and i thought i loved that man because when is the last time we had it? Maybe 2010, 2009? And then mysteriously, it just went away. And this is like, you maybe need like $30 or less than that to put that object in there and a couple more dollars to put the balls in there. And then you write on, like it might take you an hour to put together all of that, right? But it creates so much excitement, gives you things to do. I love seeing everybody's reaction. This felt like they've done it a last minute too. So they're, because, you know, although the backstage segments were there, they were kind of very minor. But doesn't matter, dude. It's the Royal Rumble. There you go. We're never going to see this until next year. This is something unique. This makes so much sense. It builds intrigue for the pay-per-view as well. And yeah, you got to see serious segments with Bailey. Or uh, not Bailey is kind of goofy, kind of serious. But, you know, bigger... Uh, like more serious wrestlers and then you get r Tooth over there and you get a goofy segment and it's good like i still remember one of the greatest moments of all time is like undertaker beer being drafted to smackdown raw and it gets like really really mad and starts smashing stuff or you know john cena gets drafted to smackdown and he's like in shock like what the hell is going on like 
those little moments make everything and i think triple h is someone who pays attention to the small things and he plays the long game where hey we're gonna get a lot of things but we're just not gonna get him right now in a millisecond but we're gonna get him and slowly but surely he's bringing back a lot of those things we saw it with the royal rumble segments everybody picking their number awesome man more of that man for you know elimination chamber do something of the sort you know make it feel special but we also see it with mid-card titles being much more important than they were ever in a long time we're also seeing people on tv that under the guise of Vince McMahon we would never ever see ever like they would be out of the company and at least now they're getting a chance to showcase themselves getting a chance to fail at the very least if you're not gonna do a good job and i think that it's very important i think in three four years like all of these small changes will be become more noticeable and noticeable and when you look back a couple years back or you know you get what i mean you're gonna see oh my god wwe is so much better i, I can say it's already so much better again one more thing triple a change he got rid of the gimmick paper rules so you're not gonna see a hell in a cell match just because the paper is called a hell in a cell besides you know money in the bank or royal rumble which those make sense right i love it i love it and the big paper rules like wrestlemania feel a bit more like wrestlemania at least he's trying to give that importance uh, last uh, la yeah last year's wrestlemania i think it had some problems but hey he's trying man and but each passing year hopefully he keeps his passion going uh, it brings some new ideas brings back some old ideas that has always worked and will continue to do so forever and i think uh, the future of wwe is right man especially with them moving to netflix which uh that can be a whole nother video in and of itself so i'm not gonna get to it let's go ahead and get to this uh, match real quick by carmelo hayes and austin theory honestly this was nothing special until the very end um i was afraid they were gonna botch it again but no last week these two really didn't have any chemistry in the ring like their timing was off everything was off about him so when the botch happened uh, i was like i kind of winced right but i wasn't surprised honestly because they were messing up like the apron ddt or the simplest moves again the timing was off this week no problem i mean carmelo has at the very beginning like it was kind of weird they they were kind of lost but they didn't make such a huge mistake that people would notice so you know whatever the match was whatever the big point of this was this bad boy coming in right here trick williams and i was surprised for a second that the crowd knew how to say or sing along whoop that trick but this has to be the royal rumble crowd right they're here for smackdown they're here for the royal rumble and then they're probably here for the raw after um sunday so that's why wwe probably put trick williams out here to also promote uh, their upcoming match at a nxt pay-per-view cool man i love seeing his debut this was a great debut this was one of the better nxt debuts right because man he just came out here great reaction saves the day you know i'm looking cool looking bomb and you gotta believe that trick williams is not far behind carmelo hayes and after that match maybe carmelo hayes will probably leave nxt for good and move on to the main roster and trick williams after having a bit of run with the nxt championship he might follow carmelo hayes to the main roster as well we got brown breaker on the way to 2024 is gonna be a wild year and 2025 with netflix coming into the play will even be wilder i mean as a matter of fact 2024 it's wild already uh speaking of wild there you go solo sokoa before this paul Heyman talked to jimmy uso gave him pep talk told him to be a world heavyweight champion man be the real tribal chief you know what i mean and i love that i love how serious jimmy got i think he should do that more like i said i think a lot more people need to get serious in the wwe and be less goofy uh, especially when we're heading to the wrestlemania anyhow uh, this match was also a nothing burger uh, whatever i don't remember any botches or any honestly any memorable spots either uh, i just think oh one thing i will say the comeback of la Knight. i don't like it i i don't think he has a legit comeback and um i mean he does he does his stuff and then he ends it with like the people's elbow i get that but in this match for example he's on the comeback he's doing so many moves and the crowd's going whoa 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 and they're going more and more up in decibels but la knight never ends that combo or nothing happens or the rhythm is broken because wrestling is almost when you're doing a comeback it's almost like dancing it's almost like music and osprey for example is great at dancing <laughs> so that's why he's great at wrestling as well you know interesting uh fact there it's just la knight like i said 
He gets to the top of the comeback and then he just keeps on come, going, you know, keeps on going. And it's like, all right, we had the climax, right? Don't keep on sucking. You know what I mean? Time to change it up. Time to do something else. But anyways, this match ended dirty and in, like with AJ Styles coming in, as you can see right here. And yeah, I mean, what did you expect? Right, go home show. Obviously, we're not going to get a clear victor here. Randy Orton came in, RKO day, AJ Styles. AJ Styles just selling everything perfectly. This was hype. This was hype. Um, and then, yeah, Jimmy was again acting goofy, saying, please, please, which I thought, I mean, that's cool. That's great. I love the fact that, yeah, when he was getting the DDT, he uh, like reaches his arm. I'm like, please don't do it. That's great because some people, you'll have them in this position and they'll just, no facial expressions, no nothing. They, they won't wave their hands. Or when someone picks, say CM Punk picks somebody up for the GTS, if you're, if you're seeing and watching a good wrestler, that wrestler is probably going to be like, oh shit, I'm going to die. And then he tries to wiggle, even though he knows he's not going to be able to reverse. He, he's going to eat the move. He tries to get away from it. At least he tries to make it seem like that. That's where you can tell this guy is not just a good wrestler, he's a great wrestler. And again, Jimmy is, I think, right, just needs to be a bit more serious, man. Like, um, because I like this right here, him reaching out his hand, perfect. Him saying, no, 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 he's like, come on. I know you're Jimmy Uso, but like, act like you're a main eventer. Roman Reigns would be scared. He would be scared, right? But he wouldn't be this scared. But anyways, 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 anyways. Uh, I think Jimmy Uso has the potential. Jay Uso has the potential to do bigger things, man. But uh, we'll see. Will he ever be a w world champion, though, right now? Looking at his career trajectory, yeah, I don't think so for Jimmy. Uh, at least for now. At least for now. He's still young, relatively. So, anyhow, yeah, 6-6. Uh, six six, this is where it ends. AJ eats the RKO and then LA Knight finishes the show. Just... Uh, Five seconds left, uh, gets Randy Orton with the BFT, his music plays. I mean, cool. Royal Rumble is tomorrow, no Roman Reigns. And <laughs> if you're not used to it already, get used to it because we're just not going to see Roman Reigns for a while. When he wins at WrestleMania, he's going to keep doing the same schedule. If he loses at WrestleMania, he's going to probably take a break for a long time. So again, if you're not already used to not seeing Roman Reigns, get used to it. That being said, ladies and gentlemen, I thought this would be a lot shorter, but hey, I haven't reviewed this shows in a long while so there was a lot of other things that i wanted to get in there as well hope you liked it i would say for smackdown reviews it's going to be around 20 minutes from now on and then for raw it's going to be about 30 because you know raw was longer but this is the way i like doing it man i just want to get in there and really share my passion with you and talk about all the details because i think that's going to make an enjoyable viewer experience for you and speaking of you all right i talked enough i want you to talk now down in the comment section and tell me, what did you like? What did you didn't what you didn't like? As a matter of fact, let's have a question of the week. Do you think the Carrying Cross segment was good? Are you hyped for him now? Do you want to see more of Carrying Cross after the segment that happened in the SmackDown? Also, type ye down in the comments if you watched to this point, so that I know that you watched to this point. That being said, if you do that, man, I like you. You're you're cool. You're pretty freaking cool. Ye, I'm out. <laughs>